Welcome to the 2010 Monroe Livingston EMS protocol update for the Evolve's Tooth Reimplantation Protocol. My name is Jeremy Cushman, and as the Regional EMS Medical Director, I will take this opportunity to review with you this new protocol. You are expected to review this presentation along with the protocol update relevant to your specific certification level. Following satisfactory completion of the post-test, you may begin using these protocols immediately. You must complete this training prior to April 1st, 2010. During this presentation, I will review relevant anatomy, review who may be eligible for reimplantation, and then demonstrate the procedure. The first question you must be asking is why do we have a protocol on how to reimplant a volsed teeth? Well, the length of time before a tooth is implanted and how it is transported are crucial in successfully saving and reimplanting the permanent tooth. In fact, the best chance for success is when reimplantation occurs less than five minutes from injury. As you will see, this is a simple procedure that any level EMT can perform in the field. Let's first review the anatomy, which should be familiar to you. Of note is the gingiva, or gums, along with the teeth, uvula, tonsil, and tongue, as identified in the picture to your left. The right photo reviews the names of the permanent teeth, with the upper central and lateral incisors being the most commonly avulsed teeth. The canines are less frequently avulsed, and the premolars and molars require significant force, and if avulsed, will be accompanied by other significant facial trauma. The tooth can be divided into the crown and the root. The crown is the visible portion of the tooth above the gingiva or gums. The hard white enamel covers the softer dentin. The root buries itself deep into the upper or lower jaw into bone called alveolar bone. The root includes nerves and blood supply that maintain the tissue of the tooth. Various teeth have different types of root structures. Incisors, canines, and premolars have a single root, while molars have multiple roots. Thus, it's not surprising that it's very difficult to avulse a molar. Here is an avulsed tooth. Which type of tooth do you think it is? That's right, it's an incisor. The criteria for reimplanting a tooth within the protocol states to only reimplant permanent teeth. So how can we tell? Baby teeth include 10 on each jaw for 20 total. As you can see on the left figure, the front teeth start appearing at approximately seven to eight months of age, while the rear teeth appear closer to two years of age. Baby teeth are replaced by adult teeth and number 16 in each jaw for 32 total. As you can see in the figure on the right, on average the incisors appear between 6 and 8 years of age, and all the teeth are permanent by about 11 or 12 years of age with the exception of the third molars. Knowing when these teeth appear is important. For example, a 5-year-old is unlikely to have permanent front incisors, while a 10-year-old is likely to have permanent front incisors. For those that are between 5 and 10 years of age, there are some other ways to tell permanent teeth from baby teeth. First, there are small protrusions located on the top of permanent teeth called mammalones. These are very noticeable when the permanent teeth first erupt, and they will wear off in time with use. Secondly, baby teeth are very white in color, whereas permanent teeth look a bit more amber or yellowish in color. This is perfectly normal. In this slide, which are the permanent teeth? That's right, the white arrows point to the permanent teeth, which are slightly yellower and have mammalons, compared to the black arrows that point to the smooth white baby teeth. Now try this one. Which are the permanent teeth? That's right, the white arrows point to the permanent teeth, which are slightly yellower and have mammalons, compared to the black arrows that point to the smooth white baby teeth. The protocol also indicates that we should not reimplant if the alveolar bone or gingiva are missing or if the root is fractured. So how do I tell that? These two images demonstrate significant damage and maceration of the gingiva. The figure on the upper left in particular is suggestive of alveolar bone fractures as well. These two images demonstrate fractured teeth. The one on the left is still in place, while the one on the right represents an impacted tooth. In both these cases, nothing should be done in the pre-hospital environment to manage them. All of these images represent teeth that should not be reimplanted. 
the two upper pictures demonstrate posterior displacement of the teeth. Although they are not avulsed, they are often associated with fracture of the underlying bone and should not be manipulated. The lower image again demonstrates significant maceration of the gingiva, precluding safe reimplantation. All of these photos, however, represent the location of an avulsed tooth that is eligible for reimplantation. As you can see, it is often the central incisor that is avulsed, and this makes for relatively simple reimplantation. So let's review our criteria one more time. We should only reimplant permanent teeth. Our best chance for success is when reimplantation occurs less than five minutes from injury. We should not reimplant if the alveolar bone or gingiva are missing or if the root is fractured. We should not reimplant if the patient is immunosuppressed or reports having cardiac issues that require antibiotics prior to procedures. We should not reimplant if the patient requires spinal immobilization as there is a concern that the tooth could become dislodged during transport and aspirated by the supine patient. Similarly, someone with an altered mental status should not have the tooth reimplanted as they may not be able to maintain their airway. If the patient is not a candidate for reimplantation, you may place the tooth in interim storage media, which could be low-fat milk, the patient's own saliva, or saline, and keep cool. When possible, avoid tap water, but at the same time do not allow the permanent tooth to dry. Let's review the procedure. We should provide our routine medical and trauma care, assuring the patient's airway is patent and provide oxygen as needed. Consider need for spinal mobilization as appropriate based on the mechanism of entry and the patient's complaint. As a reminder, if spinal mobilization is needed or the patient has an altered mental status, you should not reimplant the tooth. To reimplant the tooth, hold it by the crown. Quickly rinse the tooth with saline before reimplantation, but do not brush off or clean the tooth of tissue. If necessary, rinse and suction any blood or blood clot from the socket. Reimplant the tooth firmly into the socket using digital pressure. Have the patient hold the tooth in place using gauze. Depending on the tooth, leaving the gauze in place and having the patient apply bite pressure will also hold it in place. Transport to any emergency department and when you arrive, Report to hospital staff the efforts made to reimplant the tooth. To reimplant the tooth, hold it by the crown. Quickly rinse the tooth with saline before reimplantation, but do not brush off or clean the tooth of tissue. If necessary, rinse and suction any blood or blood clot from the socket. Reimplant the tooth firmly into the socket using digital pressure. Have the patient hold the tooth in place using gauze. Depending on the tooth, leaving the gauze in place and having the patient apply bite pressure will also hold it in place. Transport to any emergency department and when you arrive, report to hospital staff the efforts made to reimplant the tooth. Thank you for reviewing the 2010 Monroe Livingston EMS Avulsed Tooth Protocol Update. Please take a few minutes to review the new protocol on your own. Once you have reviewed this presentation, as well as the protocol update for your specific level of certification, please complete the post-test and return to your training officer. You must get 9 or more correct out of 12 in order to pass. Should you not pass, please review these presentations and the protocols again and retake the test. Following successful completion of the post-test, you may use the protocols immediately. Thank you.